Welcome back. West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin continuing to fuel speculation about a potential third party run for 2024. Watch this. We're here to make sure that the American people have an option. And the option is, can you move the political parties off their respective sides? They've gone too far right and too far left. If they have another option, then they're in trouble. Both parties are in trouble. I've never been in any race I've ever spoiled. I've been in races to win. And if I can get in a race, I'm going to win. The Wall Street Journal writer Bill McGurn taking on the no labels dilemma in his column yesterday, writing, quote, a third party calling itself an insurance policy won't exactly stir voter passions. Joining me right now is the man himself, Wall Street Journal Main Street columnist and Fox News contributor Bill McGurn back with us. He's also the former chief speechwriter for President George W. Bush. Bill, great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Good to see you. So what Thank does you. a third party candidate mean for this race? Uh, well, look, the, short, the bottom line is a lot of people oppose no labels because they see it as taking more votes than Biden and possibly handing uh, Trump an election victory. Um, they're probably right that he draws more from Biden than Trump because the Republican Party is more enthusiastic about Trump than the Democrat Party is enthusiastic about Biden. But they're free to run. I mean, anyone's free to get in the game, but it's an odd party that um, whose primary definition is what the other parties do. They won't have a say over who the other parties pick. They're not advancing mm. like libertarians, you know, are for more free market policies. Greens are for more environmental restrictions and spending. And so they don't have really this statement of principles. They put out this program yesterday, but it's a real snore. Um, yeah. You know, they they hailed the kind of achievement as the Infrastructure Act. Um, mm. So I, I don't really see it catching on. Well, I mean, look, Bill, you say anybody can run, yeah. they're free to run, but, you know, the Democrat leadership doesn't really see it that way. I mean, they don't want any debates. Biden is their guy and that's it. And they're discouraging anybody else from getting in I have one anecdote to share with you. I was at a party recently, and I saw uh, Joe Manchin at this party. And I was talking with some of the people that he was with. And one of the people that he was with told me, Chuck Schumer was at the party as well, by the way. I saw Chuck Schumer there, too. But one of the people that he was with told me that Chuck Schumer went over to her and said, tell Manchin to get it out of his head. He's not going to run. Get it out of your head. And she said, well, why? Maybe he does want to run. No, it's not happening. And you, you look at that comment, and I was really struck. Why is Chuck Schumer telling Joe Manchin to stand down? But it's the same sentiment when you talk to people like RFK Jr. He's being told, stop it. Get out of the way. There will be no debating. So the Democrat leadership has their guy, and that's it. Yeah, and I think they're making a big mistake, like not having debates. That means the first time Biden will actually have to be in a debate is with his Republican. So they're softening him up now, but they're not preparing him for the big fight. I think it's a big mistake. They're obviously trying to rig the, um, the process so that Biden sails through without any problems. Um, That's right. But I'd say it's also not Joe Biden's fault that the heavyweight candidates um, like Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmer, they have they've chosen not to challenge him. So he can't be blamed for people not having the guts to challenge him. You know, mm. and and that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Well, what about the little effort that he's taken on this campaign, Bill? I mean, President Biden's 2024 campaign uh, is outspent <laughs> by many congressional lawmakers. I mean, he's spending a small fraction of what his recent prede uh, predecessors have spent during this time in their respective reelection bids. Bill, we just reported that up until last week, he had three people working on the campaign. Is he really running? I mean, is he really focused on this? Yeah, I think he's running. I think... Um that spending underestimates, you know, um, whenever Joe Biden goes somewhere, it's a campaign stop. He has Air Force yeah, One. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, the president has a lot of infrastructure that's geared to him. So the official statistics might um, might disguise that. He has a lot yeah. 
uh, out there that's supporting him. You know, anytime well, he really makes an appearance is a campaign thing. Yeah, gets it's, a, TV. it's a great point. Yeah, it's a great point. And, you know, I mean, look, uh, it, there's no doubt that Donald Trump has become the favorite in the Republican Party. I mean, look at the well, look at the numbers, Bill. Uh, Donald Trump is up at 56 percent. Ron DeSantis is all the way in the 20 percent range. And even, you know, supporters are still questioning whether or not President Trump can win in a general election. I asked the president about that when I spoke with 45 on Sunday. Watch this. Do you think you can beat Joe Biden? I'm leading in almost all of the polls against him. I'm leading by a lot, much more than Ron is leading. Ron's losing to him in many of the polls. Uh, I think we beat him by a lot. I don't know that he's going to be the candidate, but if he is the candidate, uh, I think we'd beat him by a lot. Uh, Bill, President Trump came out with a plan to speak with independents and suburban women, and it's all about safety. He went through it with me, national uh, security, as well as personal security and safety. Your thoughts on uh, President Trump speaking to independents? Well, I think he's going to try. Um, the president is good at attracting TV and attention, but I really think the uh, campaign hasn't begun until at least the first debate and actually primaries. Because now when you ask someone, who are you for, DeSantis, Haley, um, Trump, it, it, there's no cost to it. When you go into a primary, when you choose one person, you're rejecting the others. And there's always someone that makes a surprise showing. And there's a lot of people between three and four percent. So there's a lot of numbers that can move when they drop out. So I think it's really premature to make any predictions. And I think one reason, I think a danger for President Trump, like Biden, not doing primaries, Trump not doing debates, he's sitting on lead. But, you know, in sports, when you have a lead and you just try to play conservatively and sit on it, the danger yeah. is you lose momentum. Um, I'm not saying it will happen, but it could happen. Yeah, I asked I him about that as well. I just think it's too early. Yeah. I too said early to him, don't to you risk, definitive... don't you risk Ron DeSantis having a good night? And his answer was, well, right. maybe somebody else will have a good night and cut into Ron DeSantis. That's how Trump answered right. my question about that. Bill, it's great to see you. Thanks very oh, much. Bill, I thought, Bill I thought you were asking, you were going to run yeah. a clip. No, I agree no. with that. Um, Go ahead, Bill. Final word. Final word. I think um, Trump is a, it's a high risk. And I think the danger for Trump, he's very confident. He takes on the liberal press and takes no prisoners. But he seems a little afraid of other Republican candidates to give them the same opportunity he had in 2016. Um, right. And I don't think they're going to lay down like the last time, 2016, when he mowed them down one by one. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, it's good to see you. Thanks very much. Bill McGurn. Good, We're good all to see you, Maria. Here.